Welcome to this week's Score from Chips. Now, in today's show, we're going to find out what the formula is that makes a successful subcontract machine shop. We're here at Ashby Engineering in Abingdon and there's a few points that we're going to make before we actually see the machine shop and what machines they've got. Two moments in their time and their history, they had, uh, say, pivotal moments that really catapulted this company. What, what are those moments, Paul? Well, one of them I was involved in. I Do you believe that? the company, which was very different back in 2006. In fact, what you see in today's show is a company that is eight times the size uh, in terms of the, the, the floor area it covers than it was back in 2005. And in that time, I sold them a multitasking machine tool, which was their first real venture into one hit machining. And as, as you say, it was one of the pivotal times. One of the interesting things about the purchase, Robin Ashby, who I know you're gonna to talk to today, was that he came to the showroom where I was selling machines. He came with the intention of buying a straightforward three axis lathe and he went away with a multitasking machine. I'll never forget it because he was looking at the, the turning centre and he turned around to me and he said, how much is that one over there at the back? <laughs> and my old managing director, Mike Jenkins, uh, at the time, if he's watching, he'll remember. I had to go to find out the price for it. And anyway, long and story short, is we, we did a deal and he bought that and that was one of those pivotal points that changed the company's direction. Right, I'm gonna go speak to Robin now and find out a little bit more. Robin, what a facility you've got here. Now, I know Paul's already mentioned to the audience the first pivotal moment, but what was the second pivotal moment for you? The uh, second uh, moment was in 2006 when I had a phone call from one of our customers panicking that uh, one of his suppliers had let him down and gone um, bust was in administration. So I got out of bed quickly, got in my car, ran over to um, Whitney, looked at this business, which was a fantastic business, and um, wasn't, I uh, wasn't hesitant on buying the, the equipment that we needed, took on the guys in the workshop, and took them back to our facility in Drayton near Abingdon, and carried on the process for the customers, and basically um, yeah, expanded our business by 50%. Well, let's fast forward then. Where are you today? <laughs> well, we're a growing business. We're turning over about four million pounds. We employ about 30 to 35 people operating from Abingdon in Oxfordshire and also got a business in Malaysia that does our accounts and paperwork and front end of the business. We've invested so much over the last five, 10 years in equipment and it's really taking the business, um, the, you know, taking the business forward. Right, the next machines. Well, I'd like to refer this analogy to my love of chocolate. I like Twixes and I like Kit Kats, two brands that I love. I'm going to stick with them. And they have done exactly that with Herco's. They've got one, two, three, four, five Herco machines. So obviously they're happy with service and support. They went for the VM20i recently. Um, they make a lot of one-off parts and because it's got the internal probing in there, they're finding that they can make parts quicker with the Herco. Um, this one here, the VMX 6040, larger table, big machine. They can make some of their larger parts in there. And they told me a fact about it. They've had this machine eight years and they've never, not once ever had a problem with the machine. In fact, they love it. And then their latest machine purchase is the VMX 64i. Now, James, who operates this machine, absolutely loves it. He loves the program and the software. And we hear this so often from um, operators. I'm no engineer, so forgive me if I get this wrong, but um, they talk about having the offline programming and then when you can bring it in, you can bring it in conversationally. So if there's a bit of a tricky part, you can bring the offline program and mix it with the G codes. I think I've got that correct, but they know, I know as well, you can have that spindle running and be programming at the same time. And this is one of the latest investments in recent years here at Ashby Engineering. This is the Brother Speedio M140 X2. Now this is a machine that Lindsay describes uh, as a machine like her, compact, small, uh, low maintenance. That's her words, not mine. But it's a machine that is extremely versatile. Now this is a, a five axis brother machining center with the ability to do turning as well, which you'll see on this machine. Now, now this is a part 
that perfectly illustrates what it's capable of for the medical industry. Part of a, off a CT scanner, all of the features are done here, uh, reduced from kind of five machines down to one machine, the turning, all of the, uh, the, the thread milling, the drilling, the, the, um, the slots, all of the profiling, all done in one operation or on one machine now, this part. It's a brilliant investment and it is uh, very compact as you'll see. Ashim, what's your job role here and what is it that you enjoy about uh, working here at Ashby? I'm the commercial director at Ashby, so I'm in charge of sales and quotes and I look after a bit of production at the moment as well. So our week will start Monday morning at about 5.30 in the morning and that will run all the way through till Friday afternoon about 4 o'clock and then a couple of the guys will do overtime at the weekend, Saturday and Sunday mornings, sometimes run into the afternoon. But from Monday to Friday it's sort of a 24-5 operation. And, and, and the machines, are they all running like 24 hours a day, seven days a week? Or? The majority of it, apart from the downtime of where they're being set, but there's always operators here once they are set that they can run until that job's finished. So do you feel like the amount of hours that all of these machines are running are really kind of part of the formulas to Ashby's success? Yeah, as um, we found out with COVID, our, one of our main night shift operators was off shielding and it really hurt us the amount of hours we lost during the week, not being able to run a 24-5 shift pattern. So what did you do to rectify that? We had one of the lads, um, luckily was willing to work till 10 at night, so he sort of changed his shift from a 2 till 10 shift. So that helped a little bit, but um, inevitably we had to order more machines to keep up with production. Um, what is it that Ashby Engineering do you find do differently to maybe what other companies do? Uh, we look to be a cost-effective competitive business, so we managed to have a lot of our admin work done overseas in Malaysia for low cost. Um, running the night shift, not a lot of companies around here um, offer that. So it's just about um, sort of controlling overheads and getting the most, most value for our money. When you're looking to purchase a machine, what is it that your considerations are? Um, we're looking to, to keep keeping the, the program, program inside the same, so with the Herco control and the Fanax control. But we're also looking for um, upgrades that the, the, the businesses have made with the software on the controls, so we 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 got rid of a 2006 Nakamura and upgraded it to a 2020. So obviously the software was a lot better. Looking at your staff members, what is it that you feel you need to provide for them? <laughs> well, a good the... wage. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the staff like it because they're getting the new machines and the new technology, and they're feeling part of a a, a, a growing, expanding business. And I and I feel that. With, especially with the COVID, that you've got to fight, fight fire with fire, and you've got to really go for it for your business, and look and look at ways that you can make things more um, with the high tech machines, rather than labour intensive. Um, working here is a great atmosphere, great people, machines are good, all updated, and um, and the variety of work what comes through the door. Abelia twin turret, twin spindle turning centre. Not only uh, has it got two spindles and two turrets, it's got two y-axis as well, which gives the company a lot more flexibility and a lot more choice when they're creating their components. This machine is dedicated to unmanned running. Two areas that really stood out for Ashby Engineering when they bought it. The first one is the fact that the second spindle uh, can move up and down. It's kind of like an offset motion which means uh, they've got more flexibility and can get three tools in cut. And there's also the incredibly flexible uh, ejection system, which means the remnant goes out the back of the machine uh, and it ejects in a, in a different place to where the components eject. And when you eject the component, it's done extremely smoothly to make sure you maintain those perfect surface finishes and you don't damage those parts. Ashby Engineering have invested in a new Nakamura every two years. Now, I want to tell you something that I've never heard before. The NTY, now this is a triple turret machine. Paul was telling me earlier that having triple turrets as opposed to twin spindle, twin turret has enabled them to think about making parts differently, giving them more flexibility in turn of actually making those parts quicker, making them more profitable. So I thought that was quite interesting. Another improvement actually on the Nakamura is that they've found as well, the graphics. The graphics enable them to, well, when you're seeing in the machine, make less mistakes, maybe see accidents before they happen. And I think that's a really, really good thing. And just to finalize, you can see, it is a noise that you can hear. It's a noise in machine shops. These spindles are turning all the time. And I've really noticed you're just seeing parts flying.
of all of these machines? Yeah, the game plan is, in, is to employ three or four new apprentices over the next um, 12 months and really bring, a, uh, bring some youth through to the business because we have got some guys that are coming up to retirement and we know that and we, they, we need to do something about it. Robin, what do you do to relax when you're running a machine shop? <laughs> well, I've got a 10-year-old boy that's absolutely obsessed with tennis. Yes. And I also use a Wim Hof method, which is that I sit in a, a, a recycled bin of cold water <laughs> for um, seven to eight minutes um, on, on the evenings. I haven't done it recently, but I was really, really keen on that through the winter. Can you send us a picture of that, please? <laughs> Hopefully that's given you a bit of insight to the formula to what kind of makes Ashby Engineering tick over. Interesting to hear about skill shortage and also how automation is the key now to their successes. Thank you for watching this week's Saw from Chips. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Maybe you want to be part of the, one of the future shows. Let us know, put your comments below and we'd love to hear from you. We'll see you again next week.